Hi everybody, welcome to the Doug Woods Show. I'm DJ Foster, joined by Grand Valley State Head Softball Coach Doug Woods. Coach, thanks for joining me again this week. Thank you. Well, three and one for you last week uh, in, in a pair of conference doubleheaders here at home. Put you 23 and three overall, 11 and one in GLIAC play. Let's start with the doubleheader against Northwood uh, last Wednesday. You uh, you got a split against the Timberwolves, who are an improved team, correct? Uh, one of the better hitting teams in the league. Uh, you beat them in game one, four to two. Uh, last Wednesday, Nelly Casola had the big hit there, a uh, two-run triple in the fourth inning. Uh, you scored three runs in that inning on just one base hit. Uh, Hannah Santora pitched well again, a complete game victory. She gave up just two runs on six hits. Second game, a little different story. Northwood came out swinging. Uh, they end up getting a 9-5 to win. They led 9-2, to uh, scoring multiple runs in the right. third, fourth, fifth, and sixth innings. They were just really hitting the ball all over the place. Uh, you scored three runs in the seventh to make it a little bit closer. Had a couple home runs that inning from Brianna Taylor and Katie Martin. Uh, Emily Jones went three for four for you. Nelly Casola, Brianna Taylor, Katie Martin all had two hits in that game. Uh, a tough split for you, but as I mentioned, Northwood is an improved team. What were your thoughts on that doubleheader? Well, you know, you always want to win a doubleheader, but with Northwood being, a, as you said, much improved team, they hit the ball very well. Uh, we'll take a split with them on that. As you said, Hannah pitched well in the first game. Nelly. Uh, came through with some very timely hitting for us. Uh, we got up, and then uh, Hannah sort of shut the door down the mm -hmm. you know the rest of the game. Yeah, and then uh, as I mentioned in that seventh inning, after Brianna Taylor hit a two-run home run, Katie Martin came up and hit a solo home run to right field. And on that one swing, she broke three Grand Valley State career records for home runs, hits, and runs scored. She now has 261 hits in her career, 165 runs. 47 home runs, which is not only the new Grand Valley record, it's also the new GLIAC record as Kim Biscup, your former slugger, uh, held the old record. Uh, Katie has six career records now here at Grand Valley State. The numbers certainly suggested, is she the best hitter you've ever had? Well, Katie is just a tremendous hitter and, and she would have to be right up there in the, in the top two that we've had in our program. And Katie can do different things. Katie can also run a little bit too, so uh, she's a person that she hits a single, we can bunt her to second and know that she'll get there. Uh, at the same time, she's also a person who can just blast it in that one in the seventh inning against Northwood was not a cheap home run. Right. It co probably cleared the fence by 30 feet, and that was with the wind blowing in. So uh, just a great hitter. Yeah, congratulations, sir. Again, broke three records on just that one swing in the seventh inning of the game against Northwood. Let's move to Sunday. Uh, the game against, you had a doubleheader against Ferris State that got pushed back a day, and uh, your team came out and, and played very well against the Bulldogs. You got a sweep of Ferris State, your arch rival, that's always good to do. Game one, you win four to two. Uh, three of your four runs came in the fourth inning. Uh, Emily Holt had a big single back up right. the middle with two outs. Brittany Taylor hit a single to the, the right side of the infield that hit the first base bag and popped into the outfield. Uh, and then Hannah Santora, again, she moved to 13-0. and 0. She gave up nine hits. Ferris State left ten runners on base, which I'm sure added some gray hairs to Ooh, your head. Oh, yes. But uh, uh, she ended up getting the win and getting out of trouble. And then game two, a uh, little history was made. Sarah Andrzejczyk throws a, a no-hitter, 10 strikeouts. She only let four runners on base. Uh, specifically talk about her there and uh, and the catch that Brittany Taylor made at the end of the game. The only run for you came on a sacrifice fly from Kaylee Bertram right. uh, in, the I believe, the fourth inning. Uh, so you get a, a one nothing win in that game. Uh, great to sweep the Bulldogs, I'm sure. Yeah, it's your, it's your big rivalry because they're close to us, and, and it's great. We had a very good crowd here, even though weather conditions were not ideal. We had a good crowd. Uh, and to get a sweep uh, was, you know, outstanding for us. That first game, Hannah, I tell you, you make it more interesting than it needs to be mm -hmm. sometimes with the runners on base. But she'd been fortunate to get out of those situations. And uh, and we did get some uh, big hitting. You mentioned Emily Holt and uh, Brittany Taylor. That's your eight and nine hitters coming through yeah. for you with that. So it's great when you can get uh, contributions all the way up and down your batting lineup with that. Uh, second game, uh, you know, a one nothing game. It was great to see Sarah Andrzejczyk bounce back. She, and she'll tell you, she didn't have a great outing against Northwood on Wednesday, but she bounced back and then threw an exceptional game. And, uh, and Brittany with her catch uh, to end it, they had a runner on first, two outs, and first I thought, oh my golly, this thing's out of here. And then I said, maybe we can keep it in the park. And she makes a diving catch at the warning track to uh, preserve a no-hitter and the win. In our run, that's what we talked about, Katie Martin, uh, you know, Katie was the one that scored that run. She mm -hmm. had a single. We bunted her to second. She moved over to third on a, on a uh, air uh, by Ferris. And then uh, Kaylee Bertram had a sacrifice fly. You score a run. You, you sort of grind it out that way. No home runs or anything. You grind it out. And then uh, 
uh, Sarah pitched a, a great game. And a little different style than what you're used to playing, yes. but you'll take the win any way you can get it. Uh, Doc, talk a little bit about your pitching so far. Obviously, Hannah's off to a great start. She's 13-0, and um, one of the best starts by a pitcher that you've ever had. And uh, as we mentioned, Sarah Andres, Andres excuse me, throwing the no-hitter uh, on Sunday. She's 10-2. and two. She's only really had the two bad outings. Right. Um, but other than that, I mean, she's been, I shouldn't say unhittable, but she's a power pitcher for you, gets a lot of strikeouts. Uh, just talk about how happy you've been with your starting pitching so far. Well, they do very well. When we keep our walks down, uh, we're in good shape, and we did that against Ferris, kept the walks down. And uh, the two sort of complement each other. Uh, Hannah, not an overpowering pitcher, sort of a finesse pitcher, moves it around a little bit, will battle you. And Sarah is a power pitcher. She throws it pretty good. So I think we give a, a you know, when we play a team, we give them two different looks, and hopefully that helps us. Sunday was uh, Sarah Andrzejczyk's fourth double-digit strikeout game of the year. And if you haven't seen Brittany Taylor's catch, go to our uh, YouTube page, uh, GVSU Lakers, uh, and check that out because the catch is, is tremendous. Every time you look at it, you're not sure if Brittany got her, got her glove under it, but it looks like it she did. Yeah, it's nice to have somebody with that much athletic talent playing left field for you. It's all the coaching right there. Oh, yeah, all of it. Let's, let's look at this week for you, Doc. Uh, you were supposed to play Lake Superior State on Wednesday in a doubleheader here. Uh, I've received word that probably won't happen, so tell us a little about that. But then uh, this weekend you go on the road for the first time in, in what probably feels like a month for you. Uh, you're at Wayne State on Saturday at 1 o'clock for a doubleheader, and then you're at Saginaw Valley State at noon on Sunday. Uh, two good teams you'll play this weekend. And again, tell us about the Lake State doubleheader. Yeah, Lake State doubleheader, we're uh, called for 100% chance of rain tomorrow afternoon. And you don't want to put that team on the road and come down here and sit in their uh, in their bus. So we've decided to postpone it. We haven't set a date. We're going to try to get it in next week, trying to see if we can get a break in the weather on sure. what day will work. So we'll know that hopefully in a day or two here. And then we are this weekend going over to Wayne and, and Saginaw. And that will be interesting. Uh, you know, sometimes we haven't played real well over at Saginaw Valley. Um, so, you know, it's, uh, and those teams are going to be right uh, in the thick of it. will be, be a very good challenge for us. So hopefully we're up to it. 23-3 and three overall, 11-1 and one in Gliac play. And as uh, head coach Doug Woods mentioned, a great test for them this weekend against Wayne State and Saginaw Valley State. Congrats on the last couple of weeks, and uh, good luck this weekend against uh, Wayne State and Saginaw. Thank you. Thanks for watching the Doug Woods Show here on the Grand Valley Sports Network.